how about that in terms of timing, Mike Florio, that on the same day, you know, John Gruden uh, receives a very positive ruling from the bench in his case against the NFL that the Raiders try out Colin Kaepernick uh, as well. Um, I mean, which in its own um, right, in its own world, just uh, on itself would be a seismic event because it's a team that actually set it up, right? And he set it up with them in a full-on workout. And what uh, what's the genesis of this and the uh, the origin of it and, and where it may go? Well, it's amazing. Estimation. Five plus years of Colin Kaepernick being available and never having a workout with a team. When you consider how many players get workouts on a regular basis during the season on Tuesdays, dozens hundreds of players sometimes on a given Tuesday, depending upon how many teams bring guys in for workouts, get workouts. And Kaepernick couldn't get one, and he finally gets one. And Mark Davis had some comments to NBC Sports Bay Area a month ago where it was the first time we've had an owner speak favorably about Colin Kaepernick. And when I saw what Davis had to say, it's like, well, your backups are Nick Mullins and Garrett Gilbert. So, Or maybe it's Gilbert Garrett. I always get it mixed. There's so many... I think that we need to do a study on mm. whether or not guys with interchangeable first names and last names become mediocre NFL quarterbacks. Because I really do think there's something, something to that. But uh, is that is that the Chase Daniel rule? Is that what you're well, saying? Or, or, or the Davis Mills rule or Mills Davis? I'm, I I can never remember. Gilbert Grape. Doing. Gilbert Grape. You got uh, that too. But, uh, yeah. but anyway, uh, Gilbert or Garrett or both are gone now. <laughs> wow. And you look at the depth chart, and it's like, well, yeah, he could, he could make the depth chart better. And if nothing else. If they don't sign him, what this does, it's the toe in the water. It's the moment where he gets the workout and the world doesn't stop spinning. The, the, the fan base doesn't abandon the Raiders. The season tickets aren't instantly canceled. That's what so many teams have been afraid of. If we even associate ourselves with Colin Kaepernick, we are going to piss off 30% of our fan base. Once we get past that, that's when a team could say, well, we bring this guy in. Maybe he's good enough to bring to OTAs or training camp. We see how he does. We see how he learns. We see what kind of presence he has. We see if he can earn a spot on the depth chart. I'm told there are a couple of other teams that are already interested in him before this Raiders workout. Now, time will tell whether or not those two teams do anything about it. But this Raiders workout goes a long way toward finally turning the page. After five years, we've finally crossed that boundary, and he's gotten a workout and the Raiders are still standing today, and I think that may help other teams become willing to finally bring the guy in and see what he can do. Well, I hope so, man. I'll, I'll be honest, <clears throat> you know, Mike, because uh, we don't have it's it's not 2017 anymore. We don't have a sitting president calling football players sons of bitches anymore. We don't have somebody in the White House and in, in, in the position putting a quarterback at the forefront of a culture war anymore. And I think you pointed it out as well. Um, what do you think a seven Kaepernick jersey in silver and black would go for on pro, uh, on uh, NFLShop.com? You know, oh well, yeah, I know, you know they'd be, they'd be I mean, going for a hell of a lot more on eBay because you wouldn't be able to buy them; they'd be sold out. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to buy them on the and, secondary market. And the idea that that this was Mark Davis putting a thumb in the eye of the NFL, I I I I think there are many in 345 Park Avenue uh, for the NFL that would welcome Colin Kaepernick on an NFL team in 2022, big time. That's a great point, Rich. This isn't defiance of the league office. This is defiance of the voices in your fan base that will huff and puff and maybe just maybe blow part of your house down for associating with Kaepernick. Back during his collusion case against the NFL, which under the CBA ended up in a grievance process, and there wasn't much. It was through arbitration. Not much came out publicly because it wasn't in court. But one of the things that was discovered there was that the NFL did some sort of research, polling, focus group, whatever, and the percentage of folks on one end of the spectrum, anti-Kaepernick, was equal to the percentage on the other end. But the NFL chose to defer to the anti-Kaepernick crowd because, I believe, the NFL feared the business damage those folks could do. So those folks are still out there. That's why teams have decided it's not worth it, because it's not like we're bringing in Tom Brady. It's not like we're bringing in a top-five talent. We're bringing in a guy who at best is going to be third or second string, at least for now. It's not worth the damage we do to the business interests to add this guy when there's so many other guys out there that can play. I'm not saying that's right, but I understand why it's happened. And, and I've said this for weeks, if not months, ever since Kaepernick's tried to come back in. There is no owner that has the moral or financial courage to do the right thing. Mark Davis does. Now we'll see if anyone else does. 
Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.